Hello, and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show audio podcast. With your host, Kenneth Pokor. And today's guests, Laura Bryson and Carter Lee from Switch EV. This is episode two, recorded on July 26, 2018. Right, yeah, so we're here for the second uh, edition of the EV Revolution Show audio podcast. Thank you very much for joining in. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm here today with some very special guests that I uh, introduced at the top of the show, uh, Miss Laura Bryson and Mr. Carter Lee. They are with Switch EV, and I'm going to get them to talk all about what they do, and I'm very excited, and thank you guys for coming out. Thanks for having us. Thanks oh, for having us. it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Listen, you know, part of what I do on these shows is to try to expand, you know, the ecosystem of, of support that's out there for the EV industry. And, you know, it's imperative that we talk to folks like yourselves that are doing things to help out that ecosystem and that, that infrastructure and the movement that we're all seeing. So it's a pleasure and thank you for coming to uh, this a little, a uh, little bit echoey room that we're in. <laughs> we're not in the usual recording studio today. We're off site uh, somewhere else and the room, unfortunately, is a little bit echoey, but hopefully you guys can hear this okay. So what I wanted to do is start just to give you guys an opportunity to introduce yourselves, tell us a little bit about yourselves, background, whatever you feel in sharing, and of course, talk about Switch EV and what it is you guys do. So whoever wants to start, go for it, yeah. Uh, So I'm Laura Bryson, uh, one of the co-founders of Switch, and uh, it's Switch with no I, -I S-W-T-C-H, all capital. Mm -hmm. Uh, And my, I'm originally from the U.S. I've been in Canada for about 10 years now. Yep. Uh, Always been focused on sustainability and climate solutions. Uh, Worked for a company focused on sustainable transportation for about four years and got even more interested in... Oh, great. ...in that piece. So you got your feet wet in that whole thing there. Exactly. Yeah, nice. Yeah. So for me, you know, similar backgrounds. We met in undergrad at uh, in Montreal. Okay. And McGill. Yes, in McGill. Good yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. we were originally. I'm originally. I grew up in Montreal. Yeah. So. So any French you want to throw in, please go right okay. ahead. Okay. Pas de problème. My French is atrocious, so uh, it's not going to work. Okay. You guys d'accord. Can certainly feel d'accord. That. d'accord. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, and um, you know, I did uh, ecology for my undergrad, so yep. it was uh, sustainability again was a big uh, focus for me. Uh, did a grad school for a number of years okay. in, in life sciences, but uh, kind of switched over a little bit and did the business thing for a little bit. I was a management consultant yep. at uh, Deloitte for a few years. Oh, yeah, okay. so DMT, that... yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, well. But, uh, you know, the, the core f- passion was still there for sustainability, and okay. I was always looking for an opportunity to get back into that uh, field. Interesting. And, um, you know, it came for Switch, it really came from you know, trying to solve our own problems. You know, mm-hmm. I was living downtown at the time and I was looking to buy an electric this vehicle. This is downtown Montreal? This is downtown yeah. Montreal okay. at the time, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, did the usual thing, talk to the property manager, yeah. to condo corporation and yeah. realized it was not a thing. Yeah. And it was really shocking because, you know, at that time it was like 2014, 15. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a. It was the, everybody was talking about EVs because Tesla was really taking off right. at that point. Yeah. Model S had been out for two, three years, so that was getting traction. Model X was announced. There was scuttlebutt about the three, and then you know Nissan, of course, with the Leaf, was still hammering away, growing their sales, and then there was talk about GM and others ju- ju- starting to jump in compliance cars. Things like yeah, that. exactly, so, exactly. So it was a good time to start thinking about that. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you know, it was really, really surprising to see how we hadn't even come close to figuring how to do that if you right. didn't have a house and a garage. Yeah. You know, but you t- they, they're just like such an absurd idea of having to put your own charging station in your condominium mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. parking spot. Mm-hmm. So I think that that really motivated us to, to do what we're doing now at Switch. It was to, you know, try to solve that problem for people who don't have access to their own charging station. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, we our first... Little foray was more on the, uh, I guess the Airbnb side of yep. things. Yeah. You know, we we developed a. Uh, Which I've heard kind of works. 
It yeah, kind of works. I think that thing is doing all right. right? Yeah. No, I mean, I think so, the the, yeah. uh, the idea, I think, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. The idea of being able to share your own home chargers with yeah. other people. Yeah. I think the challenge with that is the people who have the chargers are mm-hmm. in the suburbs, and the people who need the chargers are in, in the downtown dense, cores. Dense urban areas. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I think that idea of being able to share your charging stations will become more and more powerful. Mm-hmm. as more and more people downtown and yep. in other areas start having those charging stations. Right. But it's going to take a bit of time, you know, for pe- right. for the people to, the ownership yeah. levels to go up. And as yeah. the demographics of EV owners change too, because um, I think our generation is very used to the sharing economy. We all mm-hmm. use Airbnb That's a great point. and yeah. Uber. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. um yeah, it'll take some time. And my generation is still struggling a little <laughs> bit with that. I'll be honest. There is an age gap here. But, you know, I'm a bit more advanced maybe than some others in my age group because I'm in the tech industry. So it's a little easier for me to adopt that kind of stuff. But, yeah, it's a great point you make. And, you know, I was speaking to somebody about that earlier that, you know, the next generations, I mean, you know, I'm used to keyboards and stuff. And, and you know, your generation and moving forward is, is it's all touch-based. So, I mean, the whole UI and that whole thought process is different. So, you know, as you're saying, Laura, that, you know, that generation gets it and will continue to to want to look for avenues in the sharing feature. So was that was that kind of the seed of that whole thought as well? Is is because of your personal experience and that mindset that you guys bring for for getting into Switch? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's really for ch- selfishly to solve yeah. our own problems, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. That's how companies start, <laughs> right? Elon wants to go to space right? and save the planet, so. I mean, he's open about it. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But I mean, it, for us, it just made a lot of sense. You know, our, our passions, yeah. our interests, and uh, you know, and, and what we're doing now is still very much focused on solving the same problem right. that we had. Okay. You know, mm-hmm. so there's just with a different approach. Just a different approach, mm-hmm. and that's namely to make it easier to put in charging stations in the condominiums. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you mentioned a little bit about the kind of the age demo- difference of. Pr- for preference of sharing, mm-hmm. you know, that even applies to what we're seeing in the condominium itself because there's uh, there's two really big models for providing charging in condominiums. Mm-hmm. There's the idea of you getting your own personal charging, right. you know, the deeded uh, charging spots. Right. Yeah. And then they have those shared community charging stations mm-hmm. that are potentially put in visitor sections, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And, so you the condo board would do that and, and manage that and maybe get a source of income. Exactly. In conjunction with maybe a provider like a flow or somebody. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we, we've initially, you know, maybe based on our age or whatever, mm-hmm. like always just tended to gravitate towards the shared approach. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, talking to a lot of different people, a lot of different age groups, we, we know we, we realized that a lot of people would pay they really would prefer to have their own charging stations Mm -hmm. and they're willing to pay a premium for that. So, you know, for us, we're at a point where Switch, we're providing these solutions for the condominiums and we don't really push for either or. I think ultimately it probably makes sense a bit of both, Mm -hmm. you know. um, A good mix, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, for for condominiums, uh, I think the issue primarily for the the deeded charging station is the idea that you might run out of power. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you are going to do the private D to charging stations, especially for the older buildings, Mm -hmm. I think it's really, really important for the power management components. Right. And that could be very costly if if a board or, you know, a corporation wants to upgrade and they start digging into that, especially for the older buildings. That can be very prohibitive in that adoption of that technology, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean... Uh, you know, for what we've seen, it also makes it difficult, like for the first person to do it as well, because mm-hmm. they essentially have to take up such uh, so much of the costs. Exactly, yeah. But yeah. Uh, you know, condo boards are coming around, and they're they're trying to provide solutions to it in a way that they know that the first person who's going to put it in is going to spend a bulk of the money. So mm-hmm. what they do is they're just going to do it all like rough in a whole bunch. Okay. And just kind of divvy it up equally, knowing that there's going to be other people down right. the line that does it. Right. So you're not penalized for okay. having that first charging station. Good. So the condo kind of takes the risk factor themselves, yeah. but knowing that they'll be able to satisfy that in an in amount of time yeah. you know, by piecing it out and getting it back that way. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. So obviously, you know, a little bit of selfish motivation and thinking about the sharing process. 
um, and, and how you started that. So when did actually, you know, when did you guys, did you guys sit down at a, at a coffee shop and write something down on a napkin and say, this is Switch, or how did, how did that happen? So. Uh, it was more of a, an iterative process. Yeah, yeah. Um, Carter was uh, a full-time management consultant at Deloitte yeah. in, I guess it was end of 2016, mm -hmm. and uh, I was finishing up my master's, and we reconnected about this idea of a shared economy approach yeah. to EV charging, mm -hmm. um, and decided to both go full on into it, and uh, so we've been at this now for coming up on two years mm -hmm. full time excellent yeah excellent and you know that that idea so tell us you know what, what is it that you guys came up with and what is that idea and how, how have you rolled that out to market or what's what stage are you at yes yeah, so you know we're at a point where we're putting in a, quite a number of condominiums in mm -hmm. in Toronto and in southern Ontario mm -hmm. Uh, and we're focused on the, the software components of things. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's two there's two kind of approaches to providing charging stations uh, in terms of the software side. There's I guess the 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 the, the, the companies who provide the entire service. Mm -hmm. So you get like for example, I mean I don't know if we talk about specific companies or not, but we could talk about whoever we <laughs> okay. want. Sure. <laughs> Nobody's but... <laughs> sponsoring this, so yeah, it's all it's all open. Yeah. Sure, but uh, so the, like a company like ChargePoint yeah. or Flow, uh -huh. you yeah. know, the idea is that you know you get their charging station, you get their software, yeah. and they get their service, which is great. Yeah. You know, they it makes it simple, it makes it uh, headache free for the installation, and the, but the challenge is if you do want to go to another service provider, mm -hmm. you can't. It's kind of like buying an, a lock cell phone to Bell or Rogers, right. you know, and, you know, if it's great, then great. But what, what if they change their pricing a few years down mm -hmm. the line? And mm -hmm. unless you want to rip out your charging stations, it could be a challenge. Good point, yeah. So, you know, we've developed the managing, uh, the charging management software that's part of this uh, kind of protocol. They call it OCPP, Open Charge Point Protocol. Okay. And what that means is essentially a, a bunch of charging stations are supported in that protocol. Mm -hmm. So you get to choose between different vendors of charging stations. Mm -hmm. And there's also a bunch of service providers like ourselves um, who support the, the charging stations. Okay. So if you sign up with us, you know, we give you a choice of ch these charging stations and you get an app and you get all the services provided. Mm -hmm. But if you're unsatisfied with you know, the service, you have the ability to change providers, like an unlock yeah. cell phone, yeah. you know? And we believe that really gives that flexibility for people that you, you don't necessarily have to tie yourselves in mm -hmm. for, for, for a very long time, period of time. So is your, is your app, is it a subscription-based app? Is it a pay-as-you-go type environment? Is there a term involved um, for, for, for that? I mean, how does that work? Yeah, so for the shared community chargers, yeah. it's, it functions as a, Kind of a transactional basis yep. like mm -hmm. you pay as you go yep. but for people who put in uh, deeded charging stations mm -hmm. uh, you know you pay for your just your electricity okay. but we provide the power management support and we provide the billing uh, of the the metering towards you know you pay back to the condominium essentially ah, the okay. corporation okay. so we manage the the essentially the sub metering components as right. well as the the energy management components of it. Okay. So, so that's more of a subscription service. Right. Basically. So in a condo specific situation where it's not, you know, uh, people sharing their things, mm -hmm. um, they're generating some revenue from this to help pay back, you know, those initial uh, capital X costs that they've had to do to install and deploy this. And you're kind of managing that process for the, making it easy for the consumer to, to charge mm -hmm. and to select what they need. And um, they're getting that revenue stream back, and you're again giving them the choice of providers. Um, and I guess each provider has a different rate system. Is that fair or, or exactly. fairly standard? Exactly. So, yeah, it's a fairly standard yeah. across the across the industry. Okay. And um, but the but the the big uh, why we talk about energy management mm -hmm. so much is you know you see all these condominiums doing LED retrofits yes. and all these things and mm -hmm. to really reduce the energy consumption during what we call the peak hours of the day because the, the the pricing that they pay in these buildings uh, is really dependent on how much they use like during the day right so 
you know, for them, they spend a lot of money doing these things to reap the benefits of the energy reductions. Mm -hmm. But then you have this challenge where a lot of people are starting to charge the vehicles in this mm -hmm. building. So, you know, th their electricity prices are affected, could be potentially dramatically from mm -hmm. unmanaged uh, EV charging. So for them, that's really, really important that they keep the energy consumption levels uh, on a consistent basis so they don't mess with their their demand charges, their right. global adjustment, that sort of right. thing. Yeah. Ah, yeah. interesting. Okay. Yeah. And um, I think when we met originally, Laura, probably about a year ago or something like that, at, I forget what, I don't know what it was. Plug it was the, uh, maybe the International Auto Show? Yeah, maybe like the two years ago one. Because I know I was there okay. this year with you doing the booth or I was down at the, the booth there. But I think prior to that we had met and you guys were still in, in work in progress on this. Mm -hmm. So what, how, what, how has it been since then and what state are you guys at? So is this, this is up and running. You guys have some customers on board and you're out um, uh, talking about this or promoting it. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, you know, for us, we're six employees full time now. Nice. So, yeah, nice. we have a lot of coders just cranking out code yeah. every day. Which and based is really in downtown Toronto? Yeah, we're based out of the Center for Urban Energy. Nice. It's affiliated with Ryerson. Oh, okay. And yeah. uh, it was actually uh, Plug and Drive's old uh, 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 yeah. offices. Yeah. So, Interesting. Uh, yeah. okay. I spend a lot of Very time nice. in Kara Claremont's old office. Yeah, all right. <laughs> well, we love Kara. Shout out to her for sure. They do some great work there. Well, that's excellent. Now, one of the things you also mentioned earlier. Uh, Laura, is that you're from the U.S., so obviously you've got, I guess, some connections, some ties there, because you mentioned just before we went to, to, to start recording that, you know, you guys are expanding in that, that patch as well. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, yeah, but I think it's less related to me actually being from the U.S. Mm -hmm. and more um, where we see the market for yep. EVs growing, because, yep. uh, you know, in Canada, the growth is really in three provinces, Ontario, BC, and Quebec, mm -hmm. and uh, states, you know, like the western states in the U.S. are very saturated with yes. charger providers, so we're looking at uh, northeastern U.S. Mm -hmm. states where uh, the policies are amenable to mm -hmm. EV adoption, mm -hmm. but there's not quite as much competition. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, and, and we've done on some of the shows and some of the things that I report on seeing a lot of growth, you know, in that sector. I think, you know, as you're saying, the policies are now coming into fruition. And even even with the climate, um, you know, uh, the, the political climate regarding climate change from a national perspective in the U.S. and in parts of Canada now, um, I think the states are just saying, you know, we're going to do what we feel is best for us and, and, and you know, some of the programs that we want to run. So they're taking those initiatives and that's filtering down. I think it's being driven by municipalities as well and, and regions and counties sure. and stuff there. So you're seeing that type of, uh, those are the kind of people that you're talking to or you're seeing uh, because they're looking to adopt policies that's opening some doors for you guys. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And it, it mm -hmm. seems like it happens a lot on in uh, consortium models between uh, municipalities, NGOs, mm -hmm. um, utilities. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. And um, uh, so from that perspective then the future is really bright. I mean, you know, you mentioned in the three provinces of Canada and obviously folks know who have been following us uh, of, of our situation here in Ontario recently where our EV incentives have been kind of cancelled for the time being with the new government that's formed provincially. So, you know, uh, we may see, uh, the reality is we'll probably see an adoption slow down and Ontario was ramping up. Uh, you know, we were a leader in Canada in EV adoption in 2017. So we may see a bit of a stepward, uh, backward step there. But, you know, how, how does that impact? How do you guys think that's going to impact you guys short term, mid term, long term here in Ontario specifically? Any comments on that? Yeah. yeah. Without being too political, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I yeah. think, you know, for us, the momentum is still yeah. there. We see, yeah. you know, we're talking about recent uh, changes, the, the, the recent changes to the Condo Act in Toronto mm -hmm. for, and in general and getting, right. across the, uh, Ontario have really made it a lot easier f for people to put in charging stations in mm -hmm. these condominiums. And that momentum is still, what we've seen hasn't slowed down at all, mm -hmm. which is really, Good. really encouraging. Good. Um, I think, you know, I, I'd be curious to see the sales in the next three, three to six months. Yeah. You know, everybody's seen, expecting to, to drop by how much and how quickly it recovers. I think right. it'd be really, really interesting to see. I mean, if you look at the top model, the S and the X's, you know, the, mm -hmm. their eligibility has changed a variety of times the yes. last couple of years. And 
I wouldn't say they had dramatic effects, you know, so uh, I have a feeling it wouldn't be as dramatic as we, we might, some have predicted. To it's see. a good point. Yeah. And also, I think to add to that, you know, here in Ontario, at least, and, and I think most of Canada, we've had an inventory shortage anyway. So it's been a struggle for a lot of all the major uh, brands, uh, dealers to, to keep up with the demand. You know, I, I know at the last check, if you wanted to order a Bolt or an Ionic, you're going to wait eight months to a year for something like that. Even Nissan's now taking 2019 orders. So, you know, so they're going to just continue to deliver what they what they need to for the foreseeable future. And then, you know, that gap that we might have seen may not happen because these deliveries are continuing to come. And then back maybe January, February, March, when the auto show comes out and things start, people get confidence start coming up, we may just see that uptake continue. So you're right, it might remain flat or, or slightly elevated. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah. But, uh, but great observation. So from your perspective, because the Condo Act is, is, has been changed and is very friendly to this, your anticipation is it's not really going to impact you guys too much. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah. I think if anything, our, like our sales pipeline has picked up quite yeah, recently. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe it'll change, but you know, we were talking a little bit earlier about the Model 3, mm -hmm. the the kind of the base, uh, you know, the, the normal range ones, yeah. once they become available in 2019. Yeah. You know, if we didn't know about this $14,000 incentive, uh, you know, if you just said that this was going to be a fifty thousand dollar Canadian car, yeah. and you go inside, I don't think people would have have a problem with that. Yeah, you know, you, yeah. you buy a BMW, you buy a Mercedes for that right. around price. So yeah. Model Three, I think, you know, it's a it'll it wouldn't dissuade people if you didn't know the, that that fourteen thousand dollar existed. You know? I agree. There's enough yeah. grant grants well interest in the Model Three with all the hoopla, and, and you know, we've been covering it for two years and this kind of stuff, and and that's that's actually what got me into the EV. The whole EV market was the reveal of the Model Three and seeing that, and and finally getting more of a of a mass marketable type of car. It's not there yet, but it's getting closer, you know, from that perspective. And hopefully, that you know, continuing technology will drive cost parity down, so that we can get to that point where we don't need incentives. So hopefully, you know, incentives will come back to Ontario and and continue to. Um, in the U.S., they're talking about potentially extending the U.S. federal uh, credit tax credit and changing that formula to more of a time versus a number for an automaker so they might change extend it out to 2022 or something like that so that's all good because that's going to continue to spur adoption and i think we talked just a little bit offline before pressing record here about the wave so that that wave has already started the wave of change started last year or started a year and a half two years ago and i i think there's no stopping that right mm -hmm. and that's going to continue incentives or no incentives federal, state, municipal policies or no policies because the world is a big place and there are other countries and people and places in the world that are doing, that are continuing to move forward and that's just going to buy, I think, osmosis, just, just peel over to here if it hasn't. I mean, I'm reading about municipalities that are going to, you know, ban having diesel cars being driven in the, in the, in the near future, you know, you're, you're not going to be, be allowed to do that. Um, so people are going to be motivated to look at something else yeah, for, for transport. Sure. So Yeah, there's so many variables at play and, mm -hmm. and there's no stopping it now. Mm -hmm. So on that theme of sustainable transport then, you know, what's, what's your thought, Laura, on that? What's your perspective on, uh, you know, where that is headed? Like what's it, what's it come to and where it's headed? I guess from a consumer, not necessarily from a commercial, because you guys are consumer focused, right? You're not dealing with commercial yet uh, and I don't want you to... Mm -hmm. Give us any trade secrets or anything here, you know. But we all know that you know, commercial-wise, you know, fleets are being changed, especially especially mass transit-oriented systems. Those are really the easy, you know, the low-hanging fruit for EV adoption from that side. But what do you see, Laura, from a consumer-based sustainable transport? What's your thoughts there? I think uh, increasingly electric. I mean, down mm -hmm. like way down the line, we're going to see uh, more autonomous vehicles. Mm -hmm. Just because uh, in dense urban areas, it's a lot easier to drive electric. It makes sense that yep. those autonomous fleets would be electric. Um, hopefully more cycling, too. Yeah, well, that's another thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got to have the climate, too. But, I mean, we get it, you know, seven, six, seven months a year, I guess, in fairness, and maybe a little bit more. Yeah, you see, uh, like, a lot of the recent investments from Uber and yep. Lyft in these... Uh, yeah assisted uh, scooter companies mm -hmm. are really really interesting That's as right. well yeah. Yeah. so I mean it's going a lot of different ways right people yeah. are talking yeah. about drones people are talking about scooters yeah yeah it's, it's, it's interesting I mean it seems like 
the core theme is still the shared approach, but mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, our legs work pretty well, too. <laughs> I've heard that. <laughs> well, maybe an old guy like me, maybe not so much. No, I'm still trying to stay active, but you're absolutely right. You know, being active is a key part to, to healthy everything, right? You know, and sustainability. Um, you know, before we, we change topics and get your opinions on a couple of other things, um, anything you want to add? I mean, how can folks find you guys? What, you know, plug yourselves. Here's an opportunity to put your plug. Give us some details about how they can find you and all that good stuff. Sure. If you're an EV owner that's looking to get a charging solution into your building, uh, whether it's a private spot or a, a visitor parking spot um, or you're a property manager that's exploring solutions, feel free to reach out to us. We're happy to uh, provide more inf insight on how it all works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So our website is www.switch with no I, S W T C H E V dot com. Okay. And uh, our email, you can reach us at info at switch again with no I, uh, S W T C H E V dot com. Excellent. And, mm -hmm. and I'm just curious, how did you come up with that name? What was, is there a, is there some, <laughs> you know, a Zen-like story or something, uh, you know, you saw Mount Olympus or something story there or how did that happen? I, I, it's a good question. Yeah. I mean, I think we, 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 ha there was a lot of back and forths about it, but you know, we really like the idea of like the switch, making yeah. the switch. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that eye is so hard to get on the websites, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. It's a technical challenge. Yeah. Ah, I thought uh, there was some marketing. We, we were trying to be like Tumblr with yeah. our e <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought. We're not like, that cool. Is it brilliant? Uh, we you were like, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, you could have said it, it's marketing brilliance. You know? <laughs> we're just, we know what we're doing, right? Yeah. We were like, what, which letter can we take out with still spell switch? <laughs> yeah. I was like, T, not so much, you know? Yeah, so uh, luckily the vowels are, are lost in that. Oh, in that I love book. it. I yeah, love it. Yeah. I love it. No, that's great. And, uh, you know, obviously best success and, and uh, we'll continue to monitor that. Now, a couple of other stories and what I like to do in these podcasts is just throw a couple of other topics into them that I don't necessarily cover on the shows and just kind of get your feedback because you guys are experts. I mean, that's why you're here. I called you because you're experts in your field and want to get your opinion. So I read this article recently about, you know, how to cost effectively charge your EV. And, you know, they talk about some points about cooling and, you know, if it's, if you can put it in a garage and, and keep it in shade, that helps. And, you know, this kind of 70 to 20% range or 80 to 10 or whatever. What, what's your thoughts? What are you guys seeing? Uh, because, I mean, you're able to kind of get some data from, you know, the, the, the rates that people are paying and the, the charging. How, how do you guys see that? What's your opinion there? Just charge at other people's houses. <laughs> was that okay? I love it. No wonder that guy was plugged into my garage last night. I was wondering, who the heck is this? We got a visitor? No, yeah. <laughs> no, that's good. I mean, obviously, these are just all you know, kind of straightforward, logical things if you can. But uh, yeah. I, I mean, car batteries. I mean, they're built pretty good now, right? Yeah, the I mean, batteries. you know, when was the last time you tried to strategically charge your cell phone? I mean, I've never. <laughs> probably, I should. Probably, we should. Yeah. But you know, I think the idea for us yeah. is just charge it as we should. Right. I mean, if you, especially if you have a level two at home, yeah. you know, you just plug it in. Like Even overnight, overnight, yeah. Yeah. off peak hours where it's cheap, and at the next morning you're ready to go. I mean, yeah. why make it so complicated? Exactly. You know, you you look at like how sophisticated these battery management systems mm -hmm. are these mm -hmm. days, and I, I'm sure these engineers at GM or Nissan or Tesla are, like thinking about it on a regular basis, and mm -hmm. you know, based on what we've seen, they just tell us to charge it. Yeah. So I trust these guys. <laughs> you know, and that's a great observation because I've talked about this before, but I mean, you got to trust that these guys know what they're doing. And, you know, uh, there's topics about, you know, some vendors have, you know, worse batteries than others or sort of BMSs and so forth. But, you know, a car manufacturer does not want to build a car that they're going to want to have to do a ton of warranty work within the warranty time on. That's not what they're all about, right? They're mm -hmm. there to make be profitability. And the last thing they want to do is build a lemon so that people are going to you know, want to capitalize on that. And, you know, if a manufacturer is providing a five, six, seven, eight year battery warranty, the last thing they want to do is be changing packs all the time because it's going to cost them a fortune, mm -hmm. uh, especially with some of the manufacturers that don't manufacture their own batteries. So GM, right? They don't, they don't do their own. Um, Nissan's now moved away from that, that they've, uh, or they're trying to sell at least the group and move away from that, you know, um, so it's not cost effective. So you, you bring up a good point, Carter, that, you know, you've got to have some trust that these guys know what they're doing. And there's always going to be small cases of, of failures like, you know, 
internal combustion engines have had 100 plus years to perfect it and they still don't get it right. There's still stuff that happens, right? A push rod breaks or something breaks, so there's mechanics. Um, but we have to have that faith. So uh, that, that's a great point that you bring. So, you know, from your experience and just from your clients that are doing it, they're just charging when they want. Like nobody's, your app and your, your system makes it so easy that they don't have to think about it. Yeah, and right. especially for level twos, because yeah. that's where our primary focus is yeah. for these condominiums. Yeah. You know, they're AC. You yeah. know, there's right. seven, eight kilowatts. Yeah. You know, it, you're really not pumping a lot of juice into these batteries. I mean, they they say for DC you have to be more careful, and I think Absolutely. that's a good point. Yeah. You know, but a lot more heat related issues. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. All that internal resistance yeah. and all that yeah. scientific yeah. stuff that uh, it's too complicated for me. <laughs> but uh, I'm you know, with you, brother. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I think for us, you know, we just plug it in, charge it overnight, and everybody's happy. You know, why, why, why complicate things when it works fine? You know, we've had our bolt for almost two years now. We That's had, right. yeah, yeah, and you know, you look at the range, and maybe like five percent. I don't even think yeah. so. Like yeah. you, you look at your range, and today it was saying once we charged at four hundred twenty kilometers. Nice. Yeah, it's definitely not noticeable. Yeah, yeah. beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. And you guys have put some K's on it now. Just yeah, we have like we're 30, sidetracking here, 30 but, yeah. 3,000 nice. kilometers. So, a couple of years. Nice. Yeah, yeah, so, cool. you know, there's really no noticeable difference, and, and we don't, we just charge it how we want it. Nice. Yeah. Perfect. That's what I love to hear. I mean, and I think that's what needs to be out more mainstream is that kind of talk, not the, you know, the, the minority that have an issue or a beef with somebody, but the, the vast market of people that especially we want to spur adoption to you know they need to understand that it really is that easy it's like your cell phone or whatever charge it when you want use it how you want and just do it and, and it's going to be there for you um, you know obviously be cognizant of the, of the DC stuff for sure and, and depending on what manufacturer recommends what but it's a great great point you guys make and I thank you guys for making that and you know on that note there was another article that I read that talked about thermal management and again it went into scientific research about charging you know full versus, versus partial and that kind of stuff and and i'm the same way i don't really want to have to try to set timers and try to figure out should i go 80 percent or you know where, where am i at today i just plug it in when i need to and, it, and it's that but you know so from your client base you don't uh, you're not recommending other than time of use you're not really recommending that they only plug in for four hours or six hours or, or whatever the case may be. Is that correct? Do you guys do anything like that? Yeah, we, we just let them yep. do what they want to do. Mm -hmm. Like for, for in my opinion, like for AC, there's really level two, so you're really right. not doing much about it, right. you know? Yeah, yeah. interesting. Yeah. From uh, now, now you guys don't, again, you mentioned you, you don't really, you don't install or sell the hardware side of it. That's up to the condo board in this case to, to pick what vendor or what vendors, is that correct? Uh, we, we have a bunch of uh, electrician installation partners. Yep. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, we're we turnkey in that regard that okay. we bring in the, the installation uh, partners yep. and the hardware, you okay. know? I mean, the, the idea is that you have a choice, but you know, we can provide the whole service top down. Oh, and, nice. And uh, okay. just keep it simple for people because they don't want to have to find multiple partners right. in, in this right. installation, yeah. Yeah. So that that's your your mantra, Laura, is is kind of keep it simple. So when you go to you go to prospects and clients, that's kind of what you're talking about. Is let us take that you know that management of the whole thing off your your plate from a burden. Exactly. Uh, is that correct? Yeah. 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 Uh, anything that you guys do else, anything else you pro provide for them that uh, is a is a benefit. Uh, I mean, it's really from you know the. The point of site assessment yeah. through install, through ongoing management, so mm -hmm. that uh, it's not something that property management has to worry about. Right, good. Because um, there is issues, uh, not so much in, in private residences, but uh, more in public settings where EV drivers will loiter uh, or non-electric vehicles will park in the EV mm -hmm. charging only spaces. And there's a lot of conversations uh, in on social media and in the forums about what to do about it. Um, you, told, and that, you told them away. <laughs> <laughs> you, have, you know. Yeah, yeah um, but we yeah. we have a unique approach to that where we uh, install a, a simple camera that mm -hmm. monitors the license plate of the vehicle and recognizes if that vehicle is supposed to be there or not. And, oh, uh, and it's up to the property manager about how they mm -hmm. uh, penalize drivers for that, okay. whether it's towing or, uh, mm -hmm. or charging extra for every hour that they're parked in that space. Okay. Uh, but it's really about optimizing those 
uh, parking spaces sure. for drivers that need them for right. charging. For, for the reason they're there. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Especially exactly. if they're shared and mm -hmm. there's people waiting for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, excellent, excellent. Well, thanks for that. Well, I mean, those are really the kind of the only couple things I wanted to just bring up and, and talk about since uh, we were on that theme for today's show. Um, any final closing comments or stuff you, got, you guys want to throw out there? And it could be anything. And I'm giving you an opportunity to have the floor and talk about uh, you know your favorite color or whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> you you know, we were, know, we were yeah. we were talking a little bit about uh, you know you know optimizing charging and yep. efficiencies and stuff and you know laura and i went on a trip with our bolt this winter from toronto to boston to montreal nice. and back to toronto beautiful and it was i think during the new year's and it was minus 25 30 degrees outside so you know we really celsius celsius, celsius. yeah celsius. so i mean at minus 40 you're you're like equivalent but we're getting yeah. there at that point yeah. so it was really okay. really cold so like minus 15 fahrenheit yeah exactly like that. really it's, really cold yeah. I, I bring up i have to do the conversions yeah. because i'm getting slammed that when i do stuff in only celsius say what about the yeah, you're like you're doing 100 so, yeah on the highway so how many kilometers <laughs> was that entire trip then would you say probably like Combine like close to 2,000? 2,000? Yeah. Okay. okay. Like maybe a little under 2,000 yeah. kilometers. So, like 1,000 so, miles. Yeah, 1,200 like, miles. Yeah. Like yeah. 30K on that one. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, you know, what was really interesting was that the majority of the fast chargers on throughout, you know, upstate New York, Vermont, Quebec, they're all outside. Right. And our Bolt has a really, I guess you could call it, call it aggressive battery management system. Mm -hmm. It took us an hour to get to 20 kilowatts really? of charging. Wow, okay. So, you know, in these fast charging stations, yeah. we're waiting there for two hours, three okay. hours, you know. That's interesting. It's the first time I've heard this. So. Yeah, yeah, so, and it's not because the, the car can't charge that right. fast or right. the charger can't charge that fast. Mm -hmm. It's just that the, the BMS is keeping it at such a low temperature mm -hmm. that it, it won't go above that. And it takes a long time. So. Right. What I think for a lot of these service providers and these hardware manufacturers, when they're putting these fast charging stations around, mm -hmm. is they should put them indoors. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. You, you know, like it's tough. You, your car is trying to keep yourself warm during the first little bit, mm -hmm. and then, you know, and then yep. you spend all that time. So I think, you know, talking about efficiencies, that'll be a great efficiency to put, especially yeah. when these super fast charging stations that are putting like 150 or 350. Yeah. If, the, the ultra fast ones that are yeah if you're gonna put them outside and i'm only yeah. charging 20 yeah you know yeah, yeah so. it's a good point it's all about cost though right i mean yeah. i don't know what people know but you know a dc fast charger is like a hundred thousand dollar startup investment minimum yeah. you know for one of those plus all the permitting and all that, all that other stuff that you have to do so they're they're pretty costly to do from a commercial standpoint and that's why you know these guys will put multiple stalls to to get capture more of an roi on that yeah. and, and, and make the money back um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it'd be nice to see more of that. Some of them are covered, you know, I mean, even the superchargers, they're not, uh, there's not very many indoors, right? Mm -hmm. There's a few now that are popping up. Uh, and I think in Tesla's using some of the smaller form factor superchargers as well for those instances. But uh, definitely a good point. I wasn't aware of that with the Bolt, so uh, that it kind of makes yeah, I, I think, a little bit different. I think the other car is yeah. a little less aggressive in yeah. that regard, so yeah. it's probably a, a more Bolt-specific yeah. problem. Yeah. But it's, it, it, I just feel like it, it could be, if you're going to spend that much money on the infrastructure, yep. it might not be so difficult to put it in a yeah. covered garage. Yeah. 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 Just, just a proof of thought. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I think we've kind of hit the time of the show, which is great. I really appreciate you guys driving all the way out here to, uh, to chat with me um, and provide your expertise. One more time, how can people find you guys again? SwitchEV.com, mm -hmm. S-W-T-C-H-E-V.com, mm -hmm. uh, or email us at info at SwitchEV.com. Excellent. And that was Laura Bryson. And now what's your, I should have introduced your title. What's your official title, Laura? COO. COO. Carter and I are co-founders. Co-founders. Yes. COO and CTO? CEO. CEO. Okay. Yeah, yeah. CEO. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. I want to make sure I get that. <laughs> may, as, may as well be CTO. CTO. Well, that's, you're, you're a bit more technical. That's what I was, what I was wondering. All right. So Laura Bryson, COO, COO of Switch. And Carter Lee, CEO, slash CTO, slash everything so whatever else. Whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Of, uh, of Chief, Switch Managing. Chief Get Her Done. Chief Get Her Done. Exactly. I love that. Well, thank you guys very much for taking the time to meet with you, uh, meet with me. This was very enjoyable, very knowledgeable, and I hope uh, my listeners appreciate that. Of course, I'm always looking
looking for feedback and comments, uh, so please tell me how you like this show. Send me comments, email. You can email me at evrevolutionshow um, uh, at gmail.com. That's the best way to get me. You can comment, of course, on the YouTube channel. Uh, my next video show will be coming out shortly, and we'll continue with these uh, audio podcasts. Um, if you aren't aware, if you haven't picked this audio podcast up, we are on iTunes now, so just search EV Revolution and it'll pop up and you can subscribe. So please do that and tell people about what we're doing here and the whole EV movement if you're if this is the first time you're hearing about it. So again, thank you very much to my guests for coming in and everybody for listening. Thanks, and we'll catch you on the next time. Take care. This episode of the EV Revolution Show is sponsored by File Sanctuary. Paying hundreds of dollars a month for the servers running your business? With their high-performance, low-cost cloud servers, you can break out the big guns without breaking the bank. Get started today at filesanctuary.net backslash cloud and save 10% with promo code EVREVSHOW.